Hi. Hi. Thank you, Bill, so much for introducing me. Today, Dr. Katz, Dr. Maya Katz from UCSF was supposed to be here and unfortunately this morning came down with laryngitis. And she didn't want to spread it around, so she sends her apologies and hopefully if you are at all interested in what she has to say, you can for sure email her and we can get you her contact information if you'd like. Thank you, Lance, for asking me to speak today about the technique and how it can help those with Parkinson's. And thank you, Mount Diablo Support Group, for your willingness to try something new and a little bit different. My colleagues and myself are eager to show you how the Alexander Technique can be of help to you. So, my name's Lena Hart, and I am an Alexander Technique teacher. What is that? Right? Well, we are teachers of balance, or some might call us habit specialists. We look at what you do habitually every day, like standing, sitting, lying down, and we can see the patterns of how you are using your body. For example, most people, not just those with Parkinson's, stiffen their necks while they're doing tasks. They stiffen to sit, and they stiffen to stand. And without realizing it, you are using so much extra energy and unnecessary tension. And we want to teach you how to make a task like standing and sitting easy again, right? That would be pretty wonderful. Good. So most of my students, after they've taken some Alexander lessons, say to me, oh my goodness, I feel like a kid again. And that is because when you were a child, this one's mine, you most likely used your body very well. You very naturally balanced your head up and over your feet, and you were in constant teeny tiny movements all the time, and you instinctively found your balance. And then you started to grow up, right? You started to copy your parents and your friends and your teachers, and you started, most importantly, to know what it is like to be afraid of something, like falling down, for example. And the problem is, is you learned a habit. A habit was a way for you to deal with not wanting to fall down, right? This is a habit. And the problem with that habit is that it may hold a lot of unnecessary tension. So, with PD, what that means, is that you can't have as much autonomy and independence as you would like because your habits of holding tension makes it pretty near impossible for you to do what you want to do. So that is where we, Alexander Technique teachers, come in. We very kindly, very gently, make you aware of your habits. We teach you how to press the pause button on them, and then we give you a better way to move with less stiffness, less pain, possibly no pain, and with more control over your body. For example, most people living with Parkinson's have very stiff necks. Was that something that you would all agree to? Yes, yes. Some of that is PD, but some of that is a habit you had before PD that you weren't even aware of. We are going to help you with that today so that you have tools to manage your symptoms of PD. So let's take a very short look, because I don't want to bore you to death, at some scientific research behind using the Alexander Technique for Parkinson's disease. In a randomized control trial of the Alexander Technique for Parkinson's done in 2002, a study was done to determine whether the Alexander Technique alongside normal treatment is of benefit to people disabled by idiopathic Parkinson's disease. The results were wonderful, and they, the Alexander Technique group improved dramatically compared with the no intervention group. The comparative improvement was even maintained at their six-month follow-up. So this is really, really good news. Now, what was the improvement? The Alexander Technique group was comparatively less depressed post-intervention, and at the six-month follow-up had improved on the attitudes to self-scale. 
their balance and control over their body was also improved. Many of my students want to know, before they start, how long is it going to take me to learn these skills? Right? This is a very valid question. Of course, everyone is different, but what I suggest is anywhere between 12 and 24 lessons. And the reason I say that is because the studies that have been done comparing the Alexander Technique to massage or acupuncture show that 12 to 24 lessons gives you lasting improvement, which of course is what I'm after. Lance Gershon, your co-president of PNMD, is one of my students and asked me to be here, I think, because he's found the lessons help him manage his symptoms. So we're going to watch another student with PD talk about her experience using the Alexander Technique. She was interviewed at the Mayo Clinic. Yoga, Pilates, Tai Chi, meditation, all are activities that can improve your health by enhancing the mind-body balance. Now you can add the Alexander Technique to that list. It's a very gentle practice geared toward improving your movement, posture, and quality of life. Here's more from fitness experts at Mayo Clinic. Remembering that you're not doing anything, you're undoing the unhelpful. Undoing the unhelpful. That's a basic principle of the Alexander Technique. It's a way of recognizing harmful habits of movement and posture, learning how to stop those habits. Fitness expert Laurel Podolke teaches the Alexander Technique. Dina Mamasas says the gentle practice of promoting mind and body balance has not only helped her move more freely and more comfortably, but it's also helped symptoms of essential tremor. My head shakes continuously, but with the Alexander Technique, I completely relax and the essential tremor just disappears for a while. It does not cure her essential tremor, but Dina says after a session, she's relaxed enough that symptoms lessen for a couple hours. You see, the Alexander Technique was developed about 125 years ago by Frederick Matthias Alexander, a Shakespearean actor living in Australia. He developed chronic hoarseness and decided after years of self-study that it was caused by bad habits of movement and posture. The Alexander Technique uses gentle movements and thought to help you undo those bad habits so you can move more freely and naturally. Often our habits cause us to compress or sink, which can create pain and strain. It can make us prone to injury. And the Alexander Technique is a mind-body approach to bringing the body back into balance. For more information about the Alexander Technique, visit mayoclinic.org. I'm Vivian Williams. Great. So what happens in an Alexander Technique lesson? So as you can see in the video, a lesson will consist of lying down, although in my studio, you are not on the floor, but on a massage table. And we work on you learning to soften your muscles and change your long-time habits. And then we will work on things that you do regularly every day, like sitting, standing, walking, and we will also work on the activities that are giving you trouble. So maybe that for you is getting in and out of bed. Maybe it's opening your wallet. Most importantly, we will give you tools to manage your tremors, manage your stiffness, and tools to help you when you get stuck. And we're going to start today in learning some of these tools. I want you to be able to say to me, Lena, I feel so much better. And I can do all of this on my own now. When I stall or I start shaking, I know what to do. My knees don't hurt anymore. I'm sleeping better. I can use my voice better. I can get out of a chair at a restaurant much smoother. This is what I want for you. And I'm very lucky that a number of my colleagues have joined me here today to help me give you an experience of what a first lesson might be like. So Alexander Technique teachers, could you come out and raise your hand so that they know who you are? Thank you, thank you. And so the Alexander Technique teachers are going to come around to, to your particular group, which you're already part of right now. And 
they're going to use verbal instruction and also physical instruction. Physical instruction meaning we will very gently put our hands on your head, on your back, on your neck, on your arms to help you regain your balance. And by the end of our short session today, I hope you will get the experience of lightness and ease that can be had by studying the technique. So let's get started, shall we? We are going to do a very large group class right now. A very large, large, tight group class, right? And we are gonna learn three tools to manage symptoms of PD. The first one that we're going to work on is softening the neck, softening the neck. We want you to learn to change your habit of stiffening the neck. So let's learn to soften the neck. Could everyone please put their hand on the front and back of your neck? And if you're not sure what that means, go ahead and look around at an Alexander Technique teacher. Great. Awesome, great, so putting, I'll probably be better up here. Yes, so putting your hands. Now what I would like you to do is I would like you to just start to feel the muscles inside your neck, please. Feeling the muscles inside your neck. Go ahead, while you're feeling your neck, can you nod yes? Can you nod no? And notice for yourself, does that feel difficult or does it feel easy? Just noticing. There's no wrong answer, so you're just noticing. That's right, good. Now, what I would like you to do is I want the neck as soft as possible. And why do I care about that? I care about that because your brain is up here and the rest of your body is down here, right? So if there's a lot of traffic in your neck, which is the only bridge to your brain, the rest of your body has a lot of problems. Okay, we want the least amount of traffic possible. Okay, so we're going to feel your neck again. And can you close your eyes with me for a second and imagine that your neck is made out of pudding. I know that sounds silly. And you can choose whatever flavor you like, whether that be chocolate or vanilla. My daughter would choose strawberry for sure. And you're gonna move your head around a little bit and imagine that your neck is so soft like it's made out of pudding. Very good. And now I'd like you to open your eyes, and it's harder to imagine with your eyes open, but I want you to be able to do this with your eyes open when you feel tense. So with your eyes open, can you imagine that your neck is soft like pudding, like it literally is made out of pudding. And Alexander Technique teachers are gonna come by in your group and start to put hands on so that you can start to feel what it feels like to have what I call a free, soft neck. Now, the teachers will, of course, respect your wishes. If you do not wish to be touched, you say so, please, okay? And so we're looking for a really soft neck. Good. Excellent. The teachers are going to continue working on you as we learn our second skill, okay? Our second skill is called whispered awe. Whispered awe. And the skill sounds just like what it is, whispered awe. So what you're going to do is you're going to let all of your air out on a shh. Great, good. And now let's do that again all together. Excellent. And we want this shush to be as long and gentle as possible, right? So no hard shh, 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 right? We're going for as long as possible, a long shh. Very nice, with nice, soft, easy neck. Excellent, very, very nice. The next part in whispered ah is an inhale, right? So everyone knows how to do that. Go ahead and inhale. 
Excellent. Great. Now this time, when you inhale, I'd like you to think of something funny. Okay? Now sometimes that's really hard to do. That's really hard to do sometimes for me. So I think sometimes about something inappropriate. <laughs> that usually helps me better. Right? So I think about like my daughter farting. Right? Or a toot. Yeah? But if that doesn't do it for you, think of something that makes you smile. Right? And that might be a grandchild or a child or someone you love. Right? So as we inhale, we're going to think of something that makes you smile. So grab your, grab your thought, grab the person in your mind who makes you smile. Can I see some nods if we've got, we've got that person, that thing that makes you laugh or smile? It's a secret. Nobody has to know what it is. So it's all yours. Good. And so you're going to do a long shh. And when you inhale, you're going to think about that thing that makes you smile. And then you'll let your air out again. Sure. Good. Very nice. So we've learned the two parts, two parts of whispered ah, and now we're going to learn the third. So the third part of whispered ah is when you breathe out and your mouth is the shape of an ah, right? Almost like you're about to bite into an apple. So. That's great. Good. So I'm going to do it once for you, the whole thing. And I'll be thinking about my daughter, just so you all know. Right? And I'm going to do a long shh. Excellent. Good. Let's do it all together now. Right? So long, sustained, gentle. Getting all that old air out, all of it out, and then thinking of your funny thing as you breathe in, and whisper ah uh, out. Excellent. So why, why am I having you learn this? We are learning this second tool of whispered ah uh, because it helps calm you when you're feeling nervous. It helps regulate your breathing. And I have found with my PD students that it helps you get unstuck. And this is really important because you getting stuck can happen at the most inconvenient times, right? And I want you to have a tool. And, I, and today we're just learning it. You won't be masters of this tool today, right? It takes practice. But I want you to have these tools at your disposal so that when all of a sudden your feet are not moving and you're telling them to move but they're not moving you say okay what could i do other than try to just will myself forward right what you can do is whisper to off and i'm going to show you an example right now so if my feet will not move and i find oh i cannot move my feet and i'm so frustrated right the first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to loosen my neck Right? I'm going to allow my head to be really soft and easy. Yes? And then I'm going to do a long shh as I lean to the right. And I want my left leg to be my first step forward. So then I'm going to think my happy thought, lift my left leg, and whisper ah out. And quite often, this gets you unstuck. Okay, right? And I want you to be masters of these skills and be able to pull them up when you need them. Great. Now, our third skill today will be how to sit in a chair well. <laughs> okay, good. So, I don't want you to change, ah, everybody's shifting. <laughs> okay, good. So, what I would like you to do is I would like you to do nothing right now, okay? All I want you to do is notice how you're seated, okay? We are going to be scientists, observational people right now, right? All we're doing is checking out what am I doing currently, okay? Right? And none of it is bad. I just want to find maybe something more useful to you, 
okay? So check out, are, is your booty touching the back of your seat? Notice, notice for yourself. Is your butt touching the back of your seat? You're just noticing that. Just noticing, right? I want you to notice, does it feel like you're pulling down a little bit? So like you're kind of coming down, where your chest is coming down to your belly. Does it feel like that? Just notice. Might be yes, might be no. Notice with your head, does it feel like your chin is down on your chest? Does it feel like your chin is up in the air? Just notice. We're just noticing. I'd like you now also to notice your feet. Notice where they are on the ground. Notice where they are in spatial relation to you, right? That means are they far out in front of you or are they close underneath your chair? Just notice where they are. Excellent, good. Optimally, what I would love, and I'm going to grab this chair here, Most people, when they are seated in the chair, they're seated back here. You might be seated like this, right? You might be seated like this. Lots of options, right? You might be seated like this. Mm -hmm. You might also be seated like this, right? These are all different options, right, that I can see in the room, yeah? Okay, and what I would like you to do is we were made with these two magical bones called sit bones. I know, news to everyone, right? And what we're going to do is find them, okay? We're gonna find our sit bones and we're going to use them, okay? So what I would like you to do, as best you can, as best you can, is I would like you to bring yourself more to the edge of your seat. More to the edge of your seat. Please take your time. Let your neck be soft and easy as you're bringing yourself forward in your seat to more the edge of your seat. Yeah, and if you need some help, would you please put your hand up so that an Alexander Technique teacher or a caregiver can come and help you? More a little bit to the edge of your chair. That's great, that's great. Wonderful, wonderful, excellent. Then the next thing I would like you to do, and this might be a little challenging at first, is I would like you to bring your right leg a little bit closer underneath you. Thank you. And then I'd like you to do the same thing with your left leg, bring your left leg a little bit closer underneath you. Great. Can you also give yourself a wider stance. Can you move your feet as wide apart as you can? Great. And also, if your feet can be a little bit turned out, right? So if I were a ballerina, I'd be going into first position, but why? Second position. Okay? So a little bit wider. Okay? And everybody has shoes on right now, but I want you to imagine that the bottom of your feet have a number of like antennas coming out of the bottom of your feet and they're sensing all the nooks and cranny of this gorgeous carpet. Yes? <laughs> Good, so you're sensing, sensing, sensing the carpet with the bottom of your feet, especially your big toes. Okay, good. So now your feet are on the ground. These sit bones that I was talking about are shaped like the bottom of rocking chairs, right? And where they are is right here, okay? A lot of the times we can't feel them because our booty cheeks are in the way, okay? So as best you can, what I'd like you to do is kind of move your booty cheeks to the side a little bit, as best you can, as best you can. That's it, very nice, very nice, good. And then, because your sit bones are made for you to rock, go ahead and rock a little bit forward and walk, rock a little bit backwards. So just a nice, easy, gentle rock on your sit bones. Your feet are as wide as you can get them. If that means you're touching knees with your neighbor, I'm okay with that, okay, good. Very nice, excellent. And now I'd like us to imagine that we have this 
big, strong rope coming out of the tip top of our head, and that rope goes all the way up into the heavens, right? And it's got you, it's got you. You hang off of it like you're a puppet, okay? So let's imagine that for yourself. Imagine your head, and it might help to have your hand on top of that back part of your head, right? The part that's like the highest part, it's a little bit further back. So it's not forehead, it's back further. Excellent, and this is where your rope comes out, goes all the way up into the sky, and it's got you. And I'd like you to rock from the rope. It's like the rope is moving you a little bit forward and a little bit back so that you're hinging from your hip. That's excellent, very nice. And you might notice that what started to happen naturally was you started to move up. Did anybody notice that? That you, that you felt a little bit more upright? Yeah, you noticed, great. Yes, do you have a question, sir? No? Okay, well you're welcome to. <laughs> okay, and so you were rocking a little bit upright and forward. And up and forward is your friend. That's you being balanced when you're up and a teeny tiny little bit forward over your feet. Okay, right? So what, you, what is now going to happen is the teachers in your group are going to take over, right? And I'm gonna come join this group down here, right? And the teachers in the group are going to take over and since you are so nicely balanced on your sit bones right now, you may end up standing from your seat, or maybe not. We'll see what you feel comfortable with, okay? And so the teachers are gonna come and introduce themselves to their group or to the people that are with them and start to work on you. And if you would especially, especially like to be worked on, would you raise your hand, please, so we can see you if you would like work? Great, yeah, so if you're like, yes me, yes me, work on me, put your hand up so that we can see you. Okay, that's great. And so for the next little bit, we're going to start working on you, okay, right? What I would like you to do is, even if someone's not working with you, and we'll, we'll definitely, Alexander Technique teachers, we'll definitely use our voices, right? So I would like you to listen even when they're working with someone else because it will make you learn that skill all the faster. Okay, great, and we'll be working with you in, in just a bit. Thank you.